Well, Sandra, I got to say something right, before we get started with this beer. We've been doing this for two and a half years, pretty much. <laughs> I think everybody who's been watching the channel up to this point knows that we are positive beer reviewers. You've seen us review Bush Light, mm -hmm. Bud Light, so on and so forth. You, you've seen us, you've seen these beers shine through <laughs> in different episodes that we've done. But I have to say, as far as beers go, I really don't like this beer. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never, I've never said this before on the channel. I'm, we're always super positive. Everybody knows this. And so I don't know where this review is going to go, but oh my, from the Paps Brewing Company, their supposedly blue ribbon winning <laughs> Paps Blue Ribbon. I've got a taste for ribbon. I'm thinking cold blue ribbon. I've got Paps Blue Ribbon on my mind. Naturally good Paps. America's premium beer since 1844. I think you know a little bit about the background of this beer. Would you like to enlighten our viewers a little bit? On I what they will need to do know? my best, certainly. What I uh, <laughs> have gathered, the brewery was not always called Pabst Brewing, but it was called uh, initially in 1844 when it was founded, Best uh, Brewing Company. But then Pabst like, <laughs> married into the family and became, uh, uh, together with uh, one of the family member you know involved in the in the brewery and eventually when he inherited uh, the brewery he changed the name into what is now called like Pabst or his last name he was originally coming from germany his name was frederick Pabst, and uh, he is the one who kind of like you know brought brought the brewery up to fame and uh, the biggest high point yeah. right and one exactly. of the things that uh, was interesting for me to, to find out that I didn't know about is that there was a big fire in uh, Chicago. There was. There was a, a giant, giant beer fire. beer fire, exactly. There was. And not a good beer fire. Not the, not good, the kind, good kind, because it affected a lot of the breweries at no. the time. But Pabst was not one of them. Because they were exactly. in Milwaukee. So uh, what happened is that obviously because of the fact that a lot of breweries in Chicago like had like you know got destroyed like a lot of the market opened up that like gave an opportunity to this brewery to to shine not through but just shine <laughs> and get <laughs> yeah that kind of created that Milwaukee beer hub that's so commonly known now that's beer fires man all these beer battles over the centuries and then finally it takes a beer fire to take down all these chicago breweries in the late 1800s and let paps rise through the ashes just like quite literally and become <laughs> what it is so my friend i gotta tell you because there's a beer controversy there is a strong beer controversy with this beer so the blue ribbon refers to a blue ribbon award that they supposedly supposedly won at a world's fair in chicago in the late 1800s but there is some debate as to whether or not the title of world's best was actually given out on that day to a to a specific brewery and there are some people who think that it was only bronze medals that were given out to be fair to everybody who partaked in the beer competition that day but nonetheless this is all beer legend and so make make of it what you will Pabst, as they say, won that competition at the World's Fair that year, and so they won the Blue Ribbon for first place. And they actually did physically, from a portion of the late 1800s to, I believe, 1910-ish, actually physically put Blue Ribbons around their beer bottles when they sold them, which apparently, you can only imagine how much that would cost to actually put Blue right? Ribbons around every bottle. So they were pushing that. They were pushing the Blue Ribbon thing. Mm -hmm. But that's where that name comes from. Instead of being Pabst Best or Pabst Select, as it used to be called, is now the Pabst Blue Ribbon since 1850, 1844, yeah. <laughs> my friend. It is an ancient, ancient beer. But I will say one thing, my friend, like the technique I'm sure worked because like, I mean, among a lot of, uh, you know, not anonymous, but like more regular beer bottles saying like, which one do you want? I just want the one with the Blue yeah. Ribbon. Like it's a, it says something. Exactly. Right? Give me the Blue Ribbon. It's, it's a genius marketing ploy, if I do say so. Talking about genius marketing ploys, look at that wonderful, majestic eagle shirt that you're wearing. I'm glad, I'm glad you noticed, my friend. I'm I glad you noticed. That eyeball right on it's, your shoulder. It's there, right next on your to left the, hand it's side as is, close as possible to the heart. <laughs> it's watching everybody. It's watching me about to drink Paps Blue Ribbon again against it's my staring will. staring at the Paps. Against better and, judgment. And at you. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get started with this beer, I must warn everybody. This beer... Sometimes comes with headaches, sometimes comes with upset stomachs, sometimes might even give you the runs. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> the beer runs. 
the squirts, <laughs> as they call them sometimes. This has been <laughs> this has been my experience with Pabst Blue Ribbon over the years. Let's find out. Let's see how we're going to react to this tomorrow. Being elder we'll beer see. explorers, having a Pabst or two on this beautiful evening. My friend, uh, let's get started with this let's review. Do let's, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Oh, my God. It smells like the squirts. I really, I'm only going to pour out a tiny, you know, at the beginning of beer brackets, I used to say, it was like my go-to line. I'm only going to pour it a third away into the glass. So I have space <laughs> to stick my big nose in there and, and get an aroma. I let that go over the years because we drank so many delicious beers that I wanted to fill up and drink all. But I'm only I'm going to limit the amount of past <laughs> are you now that I'm drinking tonight. Are my you friend. now? I am. Um, okay, cheers. Aroma, aroma, cheers, cheers to you, my friend. What do you think? Okay. Okay. It's got a smell. It's got a smell. It's got a smell. What to say? A, a, a little bit of a, a grainy presence there, uh, surrounded by this. Um, yeah. Ho- slightly hoppy <laughs> sour note I don't think I've ever like really dove deep into smelling a pops like to be honest with you I've always like enjoyed it out of the can or if on tap like ice cold you've enjoyed it out of the can well I'd say drank it <laughs> it's more appropriate let's see I think I'm gonna go with a half a point here because mm. Zero yeah, point five. Point five, because I think the initial graininess that I get, that malt presence is, is pleasant, but then you get this extra kind of uh, sour note uh, that I don't quite enjoy. So it's not quite making it to that point. What do you think, my friend? Yeah, 0. 0.5. I think that's pretty fair. It's not going to be a zero because it doesn't, it doesn't have an offensive yeah. aroma to it, but... Um... A little, yeah, a little slight bit of graininess, but then there's just that like plat, like sort of, I don't know, like processed sort of plasticky kind of aroma to it. I don't know, almost like burnt plastic. <laughs> it's kind of what I'm getting. <laughs> it's weird. It's kind of like anything. Is it the ashes of the Chicago fire? Of some of these beers. <laughs> Maybe it's it's the ghost of the beer fire, my friend, that is it's remaining possible. on this beer. I would not it's be surprised. Quite possible. <laughs> All right, cheers, buddy. Cheers, Let's take friend. a taste. What do you think? okay so i will be honest coming from the smell i was expecting yeah a more harsh presence on the palate i don't know if it's because it's cold or it's um i would say it's probably warmer than you know ice cold (laughs) actually taste some of the or i can taste like some of the elements but i will say it has like a, a very nice, like multi, very light multi presence. There is a little bit of hops in, in the, right at the end, uh, not too much, <laughs> but there's not much else, uh, which can be a good and a bad or a bad thing. I honestly don't mind it. Like I was, I was ready to, you know, go lower, but I think I'm going to go with yeah. the one, my friend. I actually yeah. don't mind it. It's, it's very, very plain, but I mean, there's nothing wrong about it. Like uh, compared to the smell, which uh, I was just borderline like getting a zero. <laughs> yeah, it's still not like bush light level for me. And it's not bad. You're right. Like it's, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go against everything that I've mentioned <laughs> up to now. And I'm gonna for, for the sake of giving Paps it, its due respect because it has been around for God almost 200 years. At this point, I mean, that's insane. Isn't it? Yeah, It's absolutely right? insane that they've been going for this long. And there's something to be said about having occupied such a large portion of the marketplace up to this point. I'm going to go as high as a 1.5 on the taste. I'm, I'm going Cheers up to, to 1.5. Because exactly like you said, there's nothing offensive there. It's actually really balanced in its taste. A little bit of maltiness, tiny bit of hops. But it works. You know, a thirst-quenching flavor to it there, which is nice. So 1.5 it is, man. But now, buddy, we got to do a little mouthfeel refresher. Here it is. Your bracket tradition. Okay. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Definitely that Chicago fire smell, man. It's the ghost of fire's past. I think that's what it is. <laughs> it, it shines through Forever the years. Is that what you're saying? It's the ghost? <laughs> yeah. I think so. I think it's beer ghosts. I think that's what it is. 
again, like I'm, I'm kind of surprised by the the mouthfeel. The the, the the aroma was a shocker, and then everything else is kind of like a little bit different. But the carbonation is actually quite pleasant. It's not overly carbonated. Uh, there's not much oily stickiness, like we always say. Like there is a little bit. Like you can tell, really? it's not like uh, there. There is a little bit of that, like uh, classic really? cloyingness uh, towards the end. Yeah, but it's not really. That's shocking to me. You know, as as bad as I was expecting coming from uh, from the aroma. I I think I'm gonna stick with uh, a one here, my friend, because. There's nothing that is wowing me, but there's also nothing wrong about it. Like it's it's refreshing. What do you think? I'm torn. I'm torn. I'm actually surprised that you said there wasn't a lot of like oiliness to the mouthfeel for you because I'm really getting that. I'm really getting sort of like that coating in your palate after taking a couple of sips. It doesn't linger too long like I've had with some other beers, but it's definitely there for me at least. Um, aside from that, I mean, there's a nice cr- nice carbonation to it. I wouldn't call it crisp, but there's enough. And to sort of like quench your thirst, make you want to go in for another sip. Um, you know, it's very sort of standard for macro sure. lager stuff, um, but not bad. You know, I think I'll go with a one. I think a one's fair. But now, buddy, the finish. The finish of Paps Blue <laughs> Ribbon. <laughs> what, do you, what do you give it? What do you think? So let me, let me take another reading here just in case to make sure. Oh, please do. Mm. Please do. So... The finish is interesting because it it's different compared to a lot of other my mainstream beers that I've uh, that we've experienced recently. Uh, it's almost like yeah opposite of a lot of others. Like there's almost this initial rush of bitter hoppiness slash sour, but it fades very very quickly. So I I don't know. Like I is it enough? I think I'm gonna stay with the one, my friend, because it's I can't say that it's putting me off like I, I wouldn't you know maybe necessarily seek it but it's also like i'm having it and i'm not offended by it let's say by the finish so so <laughs> one is kind of like right right there for me is like where you pass the test <laughs> you know i think one is kind of like without going into malt liquor territory i think one is kind of like the baseline for finishes on beers that we're going to be reviewing yeah. right now because really i think unless it's like a really offensive again like a malt liquor that has like this really potent, strong, nasty aftertaste. I think this is probably the lowest, the lower end would probably be a one, I'd imagine, right? I'm torn here. If there was a 1.2, if we did 1.25s, I think I would do a 1.25 because it's not bad. It's not bad, but there is this kind of like um slight yeah. sourness that just sort of processed macro lager sourness that you that we got on the molson canadian that we got on yeah. the bush light that you know we got on the even the bud light a little bit it's a consistent characteristic that's there that is present on this that if you've had and this isn't to sound snobby at all for anybody watching who might be a really big Pabst blue ribbon fan i mean when you have tasted different beers from around the world to different quality levels, you can tell these differences. That's not to say it's not drinkable, that it's not a good beer. Like if you like Pabst Blue Ribbon power to you, it's, you know, I'm sure it's refreshing, ice cold on a summer day. You can, I've God knows I've drank a lot of these in my life. Got in the early, in the mid to late two thousands and early 2010s, Pabst Blue Ribbon had its resurgence where it was kind of like the really trendy hipster beer, at least in like where I was in Montreal in Canada and that whole music scene, the whole nightlife, like everybody was drinking Pabst. It was the trendy beer to drink. So I've drank a lot of them in that period of my life in my twenties going out and at shows and concerts and such. So like I'm very familiar with it and how refreshing it can be when you need it to be. But when you're comparing it to like, we've we've drank good lagers. Yeah. We've drank, you know, really good German lagers, really good Czech Pilsners. I mean, we've experienced the top of the line. So you're able to sort of pinpoint the differences. And when we talk about that sort of mass produced processed um, element, um, it's there. So I'm gonna go with a one, long story short. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long way to get around to it, but now, my friend, the overall beer experience for Paps Blue Ribbon coming obviously from 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 abroad is something that you've heard like mentioned in songs and things like or seen in movies and etc. What kind of beer do you like? Heineken. Heineken. Fuck that shit. Paps Blue Ribbon. I've got Paps Blue Ribbon on my mind. Personally, apart from when I moved here, I'd never had it before. 
Uh, I will say that yeah. uh, one factor compare if I think about which is something that we normally don't talk about too much, but because like I was just today out like to to procure those beers and I was noticing the price point. I will say that compared to a lot of the other offerings, at least here in the U.S. where I am, yeah, it, it might be in that price point, probably one like that I would go for. But like if I'm just judging it as one-off yeah. experience, I think a one is pretty well suited. What do you think, my friend? To be fair, I'm tempted actually to go up to a 1.5 with the overall experience because there's nothing really bad right. about it. It's just not quality. You know, when you've you can take a sip of a beer when you've been on a beer journey like we have and you can tell when something's quality or not when you can really taste the ingredients when it tastes fresh uh, when there's some worksmanship exactly. there that you can appreciate in the brewing of it i can't really bring it up to a 1.1 as far as lagers go so i think i'm gonna have to go to a one as well my friend i think that's pretty fair that's interesting i squ- <laughs> that's really interesting that i scored it higher than you did <laughs> with, with just the way that i opened this episode and the way that I laid the groundwork for this review, for me, it came up to a 1.67 on five, which in our rating system is a nice beer. And for Alessandro, it came out to a 1.5 on five, uh, which is I also a nice beer. I have a theory beer. here, my friend. <laughs> What's your theory? I think, and I think... <laughs> Please tell me your beer theory. It worked. I'm, it's I'm it's the eye of the eagle that scared you. <laughs> <laughs> it was watching me. <laughs> it was you got you was, got you felt <laughs> self-conscious dude seriously because every time i look over at the screen to look at you i see that eyeball <laughs> that giant eyeball just staring at me it's pressure with the stars it worked it, worked. it got that what is it 0.17 percent yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you bought yourself 0.17 of a point. It's with that the eagle eye eyeball. of the eagle, my friend. Not the tiger, the eagle. Oh, it's the eye of the <laughs> eagle. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Let us know down below what you think of Pabst Blue Ribbon. This review is a long time coming. I'm happy we finally got to it. Keep an eye open. We might have some interesting versus battles coming up making use of Pabst Blue Ribbon. I'm not done with it yet. I was hoping I'd be able to be rid of it for the rest of my <laughs> life, but no. Alessandro insisted on doing some versus yep. battles. So I'm going to have to drink more <laughs> Pabst. So please stay, stay tuned for this. Let us know down below, as always, what you think. Cheers, everybody. And whatever you do, maybe leave your Paps beer brackets open. I got to say, if there's ever a chance. No, ever a <laughs> don't, chance, don't, don't forget to close your beer brackets. Maybe close with something else. That's an option. Cl- close. That's an option. <laughs> close that, with a Hofbrau. That, that would be a good like a transition. <laughs> Cleanse your lager palate a little bit. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you next time.